back with another one, baby. So, we're going to be watching LeBron versus Jordan. The most pathetic debate in sports history. Uh, it's not like an interesting video. I want to see this. I want to see what I, I'm biased. I'm, I'm a LeBron fan, but I don't really entertain the good debate. Um, I think as far as the best all-around player to ever play, I would definitely say LeBron. But as far as like... As far as two way and just being that quintessential shooting guard, it's just undeniably and it dominated the era for sure where nobody else could win while he was there at his prime. I mean, you know, you got Michael Jordan, but the good debate is just it's two different areas. They play two different positions. LeBron is still playing. It's, uh, it's two different journeys that they went on, two different types of teams and situations and people. I, I don't like the debate. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't really like it. It ain't really my favorite thing to talk about. This is like a secret weapon. It's uh, arcade oh. by output. The secret One weapon the is skipping this ad. Every yeah. game. It's a lot of plugins that from the dawn of time in sports, there have been certain debates that have waged on and on without resolution. Specific conversations that ultimately just boil down to a matter of perspective and preference. But in some very rare instances, an elite force has risen to the forefront and distanced themselves from all other competition, ended all conversations or debates. And on June 14, 1998, when Michael Jordan hit the shot over Brian Russell to secure his sixth and final championship with the Chicago Bulls, he also let rest his case as the all-time GOAT of basketball. While Jordan wasn't the greatest winner the sport has ever seen, while he might not have been the most individually statistically dominant, and while his bulk statistical accumulation does not rise to the level of other all-time greats who played substantially longer than him, Jordan does represent the greatest total package in basketball history. And while other players have oh, risen somewhat near his that. level in the time since he stepped away from the game, no one has been able to eclipse him. Yet for some absurd and incomprehensible reason that still remains largely unknown, significant portions of the mass sports media continue to inundate us with LeBron James, Michael Jordan debates as if this is some remotely close conversation. And even sadder and more pathetic is that there is a sect of media and fans out there that believe LeBron has even somehow eclipsed Michael Jordan. Kobe Bryant couldn't fill or Michael Jordan fill LeBron's shoes. But the one and only thing LeBron James has ever done better than Jordan is play longer. And it is not merely the length of time LeBron played, but the time span of when he played. LeBron entered the league directly from high school and started accruing his all-important ball statistics yep. at just the age of 18. Jordan, meanwhile, played three years of college basketball, not entering the NBA until the age of 21. Jordan then famously retired at the age of just 30 to pursue a career in baseball, and that retirement lasted for almost two full years, as he would sit out the entire 93-94 year and return to the NBA with only 17 games remaining in the 1994-95 season. Therefore, Jordan missed the vast majority of his age 30 and 31 seasons. He also broke his foot at the very beginning of his second season in the league, missing all but 18 games that year as well. Michael Jordan would then, on January 13, 1999, at the age of 35, announce his second retirement, which lasted three full years until he decided to return again and join the Washington Wizards at the age of 38, which was largely a marketing ploy for the team he owned at the time. As you can see, not truly an apples we'll be taking vacations. comparison with the modern day self-proclaimed GOAT. That one right there made me the greatest player of all time. Who has been ring chasing and maximizing his winning and stat stacking potential for the vast majority of his entire now 20 year career and counting. 
James's play, 1,421 career regular season games so far, while Jordan played in only 1,072. In terms of playoff games, James has played in 282 as compared to Jordan's 179. More than 100 additional playoff games alone for LeBron James. In totality, James has played 452 more career games than Michael Jordan and unsurprisingly has logged substantially more minutes than Michael Jordan, over 17,000 more. So with the vast amount of additional time James has logged in comparison to Michael Jordan, LeBron must be increasingly more accomplished. Well, not exactly. LeBron James, in 20 years of play, has led the league in scoring just one time, and that was way back in the 2007-2008 season, when he was just aged 23 in his fifth year in the league at the time. He also led the league in assists one time, which was in the highly unusual COVID-shortened 2019-2020 season. Those are the only two instances that LeBron has ever led the league in any standard box metric, compared to Michael Jordan, who led the league in scoring an incomprehensible 10 times, and that was in 10 consecutive seasons, beginning with his third year in the NBA and spanning all the way to his age 35 season. Now what I will say, This is where the problem hits, right? There's two different players that were asked to do two different things, right? Michael Jordan is a shooting guard, which is always an offensive-oriented position. Shooting guards will get touches, for sure. And he was, he is the greatest shooting guard ever played. I mean, that's just a fact. Compare him to his other peers, and nobody, you know, Nobody but Kobe comes close. Nobody but Kobe comes close. Even Michael Jordan's admitted that probably the only person that could beat him in one on one is Kobe Bryant because he stole off his moves. <laughs> but it's probably the only person. But that's the thing. Like they were required two different things. LeBron was more of a Swiss Army knife. He was more of passing, rebounding. You know, just more all around. Just not really. You know, what I'm saying just score, score, score more all the time to into a fall. To a fault, there are times where, where LeBron should have been have gone a complete school mode. But this argument is, you know, I get his argument where he's coming from so far. The video ain't, ain't over yet. But we'll see how it rolls. I mean, I don't really like going off of score and accolades and all that stuff. Like, because, I mean, LeBron, even still, like, LeBron is leading. He is leading the, uh, he does have the all-time leading in points. And by the time he's done playing, that's going to be true. Tremendously hard to catch. I mean, even feel a lot of people wouldn't even consider LeBron the best scorer in, in history, let alone in, I mean, in today's NBA, let alone history. So, I mean, I don't know, man. The arguments always change, and they always change to fit somebody's specific preferences of who they want to hold up and who they want to bring down. When he retired the second time, for context, Will Chamberlain is second all time with seven scoring crowns, and no other player ever has more than four. Jordan also led the league in steals three different times throughout his career, resulting in 13 standard box crowns, That's compared fire. to just two for the self-proclaimed king. But as we know, and are perpetually reminded of by the mass media, LeBron has always been more of an advanced analytics type of player. Since James was unable to excel and distance himself in standard means of measurement, an entire movement of analytics was born to build and promote fake cases of dominance for him and others like him. The allegedly efficient players, very important to diminish actual winners and prop up fantastical cases of alleged greatness for others incapable of winning. Okay, and my next problem with this is going to be this. There's two one side here. Like, there's not, he's not, like, if you go make a video like this, you got to be in the middle with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we could state your argument, but still make sure that you're coming from a, a middle ground standpoint. He's more so just making points that just down LeBron in this video. You know what I'm saying? Then more so 
you know what I'm saying? The more so like trying to even out like, oh, blah, 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 I got argument for this, boom, this to back it up, all this other stuff. He's more so hot. Well, Jordan did this and and they doing all this for LeBron now to be this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Like, the go debate is so, so like iffy and stupid. It's not, if you have a go debate, bro, have fun with it, bro. Do not take it seriously, bro. I'm telling you, it is the biggest waste of time. Surely. LeBron can excel in these Especially if you ain't making no money from it, bro. Acronyms like BPM and PER. Well, no, not really. Despite playing all of the additional time and seasons, Jordan and LeBron each led the NBA nine times in value over replacements, while Jordan gets the check mark in box plus minus, leading the league nine times compared to LeBron seven in win share crowns nine to five against LeBron and PER crowns seven total to six in favor of Jordan. In all, LeBron led the NBA 45 times in an advanced analytics field throughout his NBA career compared to Jordan's 69 advanced crowns. This is really getting embarrassing now. But LeBron, the media darling, who was dubbed the chosen one at just the age of 17 when he was still in high school, surely has more media bestowed awards than his airness. Wrong again. LeBron has won four league MVPs to Jordan's five. Have I mentioned the 452 more games and 17,000 more minutes LeBron has played than Jordan? Just checking. Jordan also won a Defensive Player of the Year award, and he did that in the same season he led the league in scoring and won MVP. Does LeBron have a Defensive Player of the Year award, you might be wondering? But what about the metric that really matters? Winning. Check mark to Jordan there. Oh, there well, we go. Winning six titles here as we go. compared to LeBron's four. Again, despite LeBron playing in 100 more playoff games. But surely, LeBron faced tougher competition. Well, no, no. Oh, my God. See, see, I, I, I really don't like when they bring champions. <laughs> I don't like when they bring championships into it, bro. Because when you bring championships into it, championship is a team sport thing, right? And I'm not talking LeBron's 2011. That 2011 is all of him. He he knows that. Everybody knows that. that we're not even about to begin to talk about that, right? Like, he mounted down the 2011 finals, right? Cool. I'm not about to defend that. That's the one thing I'm not going to defend or try to make a loop-de-loop -loop argument or whatever, right? But look, bro. Like, it needs to come outside of championships. Like, when it comes to winning, it's a team effort. Like, it, it really is. If the other team is better than yours, more than likely, you're going to win. There was not, like, like, I can't speak for the Bulls series. I don't know what the odds were of them going up against the teams that they went up against, right? I don't know if they were favored or not. I would imagine that people would have Michael Jordan favored, but there could have been some times where he was not the dog, right, throughout that championship, where throughout those two, three peats. I don't know, right? But at the end of the day, it's like, it's, it's, I don't like the whole championship thing. Bill Russell has 11, but he's not considered the greatest of all time. He's not even considered in people's top fives a lot of the time. And he has 11 championships. Like, I don't, like, like, that argument is just so crazy to me. Like, dude, like, two different journeys. Like, this is what I'm talking about with the two different journeys. Like I said, LeBron at the beginning of his career did not have a, a uh, and I'm not putting this against Michael Jordan. I'm not doing it. I'm not dethroning either one of them, right? But LeBron did not have the thing, the, you know, the, the draft pick and the, the type of player that Michael Jordan had in Scottie Pippen. Didn't have that because once Scottie Pippen blew into his own and really did his thing, and shout out to Scottie Pippen because that had to be difficult because you also have to grow into that tremendous player while playing next to a, a great player, which a lot of times hampers people from growing. You know what I'm saying? Like that usually happens. But it's just to say that, to say that, to say all that is me saying that LeBron did not have a player close to in his seven, eight year run with Cleveland first time run that was as good as Scottie Pippen, right? Boom. Like, he just, he, he didn't have that. So, already, you're taking seven, eight years off where he was pretty much the whole offensive unit. Like, there are teams, those teams, those Cavs teams have players on it that a lot of people, if you ask them to name it, 
would not even know, wouldn't even, couldn't even really remember who was on those teams unless you were a real basketball head or you're from Cleveland and you keep up with Cleveland basketball. Other than that, you would not know. For all those teams, for most of the teams that um, Michael Jordan and the Bulls had, you knew Scottie Pippen was on that team 100%. Like, oh, yeah, Scottie Pippen a dog. But, like, bro, you look at that 2007 finals teams for, for Cleveland, bro, that team was should not have went to the finals. That team shouldn't have went to the finals, bro. They shouldn't have, but I just don't like to equate winning. And then he talking about defensive player of the year, which which fans vote on. Fans vote on that. And uh, he got robbed in 2011. I still think he got robbed in 2011 for defensive player of the year. They gave it to Mark Gasol. I don't know how LeBron's never won a uh, defensive player of the year. I don't get it. They get fatigued out. Same with MVP. Finals MVPs are more, are more to me than MVPs. MVPs get voted, and there's MVP fatigue. That is a real thing. That is a real-life thing. Like, any team LeBron's been on, he's been the most valuable player for sure. But they, I voters for team. Just like how they, when they gave it to Charles Barkley over Michael Jordan that one year. It's voters for team. They do it all the time. They've been doing that. Oh, he didn't. Throughout his NBA playoff career, LeBron James has played in 53 playoff series as compared to Michael Jordan's 37. LeBron has played 28 total opponents in those series that either won a minimum of 50 games or in a strike shortened season had a win percentage that would have won them 50 games in a full 82 game year. That is 28 of his 53 career playoff opponents. While Jordan faced a total of 27 50 plus win opponents in his 37 series playoff career. So LeBron has played a 50 win opponent 53% of the time, whereas Jordan faced a 50 or 60 win team 73% of the time that he was in the playoffs. Jordan was also more successful, much more so, against these higher end opponents than LeBron as James has amassed a record of 16 and 12 against 50, 60, and 70 win teams, which is a win percentage of 57%. Jordan, meanwhile, was 20 and seven against those opponents. Good for a win percentage of 74%. Yeah, him and that picture is so be riding, oh my gosh. teams and supporting casts. Not so fast. In all, during his 20-year career, James has played with seven different players that made a combined 15 All-Star team selections while playing on a team alongside LeBron. Compare that to Jordan, who played with exactly one All-Star ever throughout his entire NBA career. Jordan played with only one other player in Scottie Pippen that ever made an all-star game on a Michael Jordan-led team, and Pippen did it only six times. So Jordan played more difficult competition with worse supporting casts while playing drastically less time and still won more than LeBron while producing a much higher level of individual dominance both from a statistic holy he need to get it out of his mouth oh my gosh oh my gosh bro wipe your mouth when you're done oh my goodness gracious and i mean in a joking matter i'm not serious i don't mean no harm to the person who made this video it's a great video he put it together real well no harm i'm just being funny i'm just being funny but, like, I don't even know where to start, bro. He's, he's making, he's using LeBron's longevity, which is a good thing. It's a bad thing. And on top of that, he's saying that oh, LeBron's played with this player and that player and this player. I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure most players, if they going to play eight years somewhere and that team can't get him a good at least another all-star quality teammate on the team like like a legit all-star not like one that made it because they on his team or whatever and he got them looking good or whatever or whatever you know sometimes it'd be some all-stars in there that don't need to be in there like it, it's happened before like Kyle Corver made it to, shout out to Kyle Corver because he was a former Cav too but it, he didn't need to be an all-star game I mean nobody's nobody's gonna click in and watch the all-star game for Kyle Corver I'm sorry I mean that's that I mean that's just let's just be real but yeah, I mean, he's using that as an argument, which I mean, cool, I guess. But it's just, I don't like the whole me picking somebody up and then slamming the other person. Like, 
the whole thing. Like, I don't like when LeBron's fans do that with Michael Jordan. When they be like, ah, oh, Michael Jordan, blah, 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 blah. They slamming all his accomplishments to make LeBron look so good. Like, this this is, like, that is such a false argument to stand from. It's so crazy. And, like, the thing is, is, like, bro, like, LeBron has played against better competition. He really has. Like, he's saying the team totals and the team records, which is cool, fine, and, what all, and all, but. He faced the 73-9 and nine Warriors, right? Steph Clay, Draymond, it was on a dominant run. And they were favored in the finals as well. All right, 2015, LeBron lost his teammates. We know that. 2011, LeBron had a meltdown completely. It's all his fault. They should have won that series, but he just had a complete meltdown. All right, so we ain't even going, you know what I'm saying? So that is what it is. Then on top of that, that Warriors team didn't add Kevin Durant. On top of Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. And it's just, it's just like everybody goes through their own journeys in the NBA, and it's just so hard to just have this go debate. The go debate is so stupid. Like judge players against other positions. Like I would like to say that that you could. I would like to say the greatest point guard is Steph Curry. Compare him to all the other point guard competition. Right? He, I say, is the greatest point guard ever. Shooting guard, you got Michael Jordan. He's the greatest shooting guard of all time. Small forward, LeBron. He's the greatest. He's the greatest small forward of all time. Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward of all time. And at the center, really, in all honesty, I got Shaq as the greatest center of all time. To be honest, number one, like compare them against their their other counterparts. These two play two different positions on top of that, so it makes it even more difficult. Like it's it's, it's just a, this is just a debate so people can get attention and get their numbers or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Hence why I'm here watching this. But you know, you know, it's just it's just well, overall the debate be stupid. And advanced standpoint, yet and still. The cases continue to be built by teenagers on Twitter who have no understanding, appreciation, or context for anything that came before. What they see, they experience, they think is the best ever. All the while, only being emboldened by rating-obsessed liars on various mass media outlets. All because LeBron has more total stats than Jordan. Exactly. Oh, his don't do that either. And I'm not even just talking about has in the go to big rushing yards than Barry Sanders. Let me talk about that. David Ortiz like, has and more home like, runs than Mickey Mantle. The same thing. And Joe Flacco has more career passing yards than Joe Montana. Longevity stat accumulation is such a minuscule part of the overall equation to determine all-time hierarchical greatness. There are arguably cases to be made against Jordan as the GOAT, but they do not and never will include the vastly and incomprehensibly overrated LeBron James. Here's one thing you need to do before you buy anything online. Don't LeBron is spend another crazy. dime on Amazon. Just like the state Michael Jordan is overrated. It's crazy. What? Yeah. Uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me your thoughts. Um, I mean, it's, it, I mean, it's always a stupid debate every time, bro. Like, I mean, he pretty much is down LeBron that whole time instead of giving him his props to just... His props to the Wayne. Wayne, you know, and, you know what I'm saying, waiting into or whatever, but... Yeah, whatever. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. This is the debate that's going to go on forever. Forever and ever. But yeah, man. Like, comment, subscribe, man. Let me know. Start a conversation, man. Something, you know. <laughs> I'll be reading them. Peace.